Hello YouTube. Somebody posted a question on a reply to a video about blower off delay, so I figured I'd spend a few minutes to make a video right quick to kind of go over it. You have two circuit boards you can commonly find on methods to do this. One the board can look like this, and two the board can look like this, or I should say integrated furnace controller. The difference is half time is was it made by White Rogers or Honeywell or Emerson. If you look on a board like this, you'll find this jumper pin right here and it'll say heat blower off delay 90, 120, usually the maximum is 180. And you have this pin portion, which I had a board to show you, right there. They can just grab it, lift it up, and move it over. Another way it gets done. You'll see on the White Rogers product here is you have these dip switches, dual inline parallel switches. Come on, focus, camera. Yay, it did it. All right, so you have those dip switches there. It's hard to see the number system, but the switch closest to my thumb will be switch number one, two, three, four, and it goes just right across, left to right. One, two, three, four. These ones, not too bad. It has directions right here. Up is on, down is off as you face it like this. So up, on, down, off. You have switch three and four you're going to use as it shows on this one. And if they're both up at 60 seconds, switch three off, switch four on, 90 to where if both switches are off, it's 180 seconds. It's one of those you spend money to on the gas to heat up the heat exchanger to replace the heat that the house lost. So how long do you want to run afterwards? Me personally, I'll run it at the 180. Yeah, it does put a little bit of chilly air there, but I like having the extra circulation to kind of balance the air in the house out. Some people don't like that cold air, and it is adjustable to reduce it. Here you just flick these switches. Won't take too much. If you just get a grip on it, see if I can kind of do it. You just use your nail, thumb. I'll use my thumbnail or little portion to just flick them like that. And that's all it's going to take to move them. This one... You just grab that little pin right there, grab it, lift it up, and set it down however you want. If the pin is missing, it's going to pretty much, I think, default on 180 seconds, which is the maximum. That's, what, a minute and a half? All right. Usually, when if it hasn't been done and your furnace is giving you that cold air, it's not anything, per se, on a manufacturer, installer. It's one of those little things nobody thinks about. Me, personally, when I've done some furnace replacements for the elderly customers, I've asked them how they want, let them know of it, and kind of just set it accordingly, or don't really ask them and just do it, per se, because nobody really understands it, unless you're an HVAC, true HVAC technician. You don't fully understand what it's doing, why it's there, how it's happening. If you have a furnace installed that, that you're experiencing that cold air after the burners are off and after you hear the inducer motor kick off, you have that cold air, just simply adjust the pin or flick the dip switches. Now, this one has it set up this way. I know Ream Furnaces will have a circuit board that looks similar to this but it utilizes the dip switches here with no codes or anything to tell you. Meaning what you'll have to find is not the homeowner's manual, but the installer's manual for the furnace. And a lot of times if you browse enough on the internet, you can find that, and it'll tell you how to program these switches. If you don't get it exactly right, you'll throw this off. Plus, you know, so we're only using two switches here, switch three and four for that I know for Goodman you can have dip switches like that if it's a two-stage Goodman furnace it's going to be whether you want first second stage do you want it to automatically detect when to go to second stage or do you want it on a five-minute setup 
So you don't really want to just play with the switches. You just kind of have to see what you have. Once again, I'll just kind of show the pins there. And usually they're in about the same location. Especially if you have a York furnace. You'll have something similar to this. Don't think I've seen the little rotary switches too much or pay attention on that. But I know you have the jumper or the dip switches. So that's about it it's just a matter of programming how long you want it the old natural draft furnaces will not have anything like this due to the what's called a fan limit switch the fan limit switch is just an electromechanical control that you kind of set a temperature on and based on that temperature would shut the switch off if you have natural draft furnace that's going too long either a you're going to need a new part, or B, what you'll have to have is somebody to readjust it if it was replaced. Because you can get to where it's too cold and the fan will stay running until it hits that particular temperature. But these two right here, these boards are very common on your 80% or 90% furnaces. So hopefully this kind of gives you a little information to help out and figure out things you know if anything feel free to leave a comment and i'll do what i can to help you out i have a busy schedule so this one video didn't take too too long so hopefully you enjoyed hopefully it answered your questions if you're wondering where to find the board there's other videos on the that i have on youtube that can show you 90 percent of the furnace is going to be in the blower compartment if you see my furnace service video give you location where that is the only difference if you have an upflow or downflow furnace but it's just flipping change they're not so much flipping the furnace but changing the compartment location so hope you enjoy goodbye